Hi there, Tim here again with the second in our series of self-guided training videos on the Pencil Pro platform. Today we're going to be looking at all things image generation. We started off last week in Pencil 101 with a quick guide to prompting with image models. Go back, watch that again in your recap. Today we're going to be focusing on getting those prompts absolutely perfect so that we get the image outputs that we want the right way every time. We'll also then take a look at negative prompting so that we can start to exclude any imperfections, inconsistencies, unwanted results. And we'll look at some of the other features that Pencil's image generation tool has to offer, such as Compose, where you can build an image around Packshot, and our suite of editing tools. So, without any further ado, we're going to jump on in. If you're not already logged into the platform, take this opportunity to just pause, log in, and then come back and press play again. Here we are now on the landing screen, and it's really easy to get to image generation. You can see our main output features are available right there. And image generation is the one we want today. I'm going to start with generate an image. The reason why you've got a choice here is that when we use the editing features later on, you can also use those on your own unprompted images. But our first practice is going to be all around prompting. We have the option to select a model here. And again, we've been through some of the strengths and weaknesses of the models, but it's really subjective. So I would strongly recommend that during this session, you just keep switching models, and just comparing the outputs for yourself. I know that for what I'm about to do, Dali is going to be probably my best result, although we have so far from Chip. The first thing we're going to do today, and we'll have a chance for you to pause and have a go yourself in a second, is to just harness AI to do something a bit different, weird, and unique. So, last time we looked quite a lot at photo prompting, so I want to start with a prompt for an illustration here. And I'm going to say, generate an illustration of an anthropomorphic tiger. I don't know why I would choose to do a long word on a video. Generate an illustration of an anthropomorphic tiger playing tennis. Why not? That is my medium illustration and my subject tiger playing tennis. I have added a bit of description already with anthropomorphic. I'm going to add even more description than that. You should be wearing white sportswear and have a white sweatband on his head. Also going to add, even though this isn't a photograph, it's one bit of photography instruction here, which is a medium shot of illustration. I want to see more than just a close up. I don't want to see the entire tennis court. This has started to build in my setting as well, and I'm going to expand on that by saying. Lighting and colour come next, so natural light, warm summer sunlight, daylight, light. And then finally, 
I'm going to have my user in specific settings. If this were a photograph, I would be using camera settings here. I'm going to specify computer. specific style reference field if there's uh, artists that I wanted to emulate, I can put that information here. I've already set my model as Dali and I'm going to ignore negative prompting for now, we're going to come back. Before I hit generate, I'm going to use this button next to generate options and I can change my aspect ratio if I want. I'm going to stick with 1-1 one, one for now and I can change my number of results. And it is always worth doing multiple results for any generation. I'm gonna go with six, so I've got a broad variety. You're not going to get the perfect image first time. You might, but the odds are low. And increasing the number of variations just increases the odds of generating something great. I'm going to press generate. I don't need to wait for this to finish before I generate with another model as well. So I'm straight away going to generate with Kinship Model 2. My outputs will appear as thumbnails on the right hand side and one image, my first one generated, will appear on the central canvas. And here we go. We've got a great selection already. It's given me a few different styles, maybe I could have specified the specific illustration style I wanted, but I quite like that I've got variety here. It has done exactly what I wanted. So these first six results are all Dali. Imogen, you can see a bit of a difference in the visual style. There's a few more inaccuracies creeping through in some of them, but actually this one might be the best result I've got of the bunch so far. And there's a lot of subjectivity to which is the best output here between Imogen and Dali. So, first thing that you're going to do in this video is have a go at doing the same. So, think of something weird and wild, really push the AI models to their limits and create something like really creative and more inspiring. Remember to include medium subject description setting and your medium specific detail and don't be afraid to go back and tweak your prompt and regenerate if you need to. Try it out with multiple models as well and just notice the differences between them which can be quite subjective. You've got about 10 to 15 minutes, have a go at that. So pause the video and then press play again once you're ready to move on to the next step. So hopefully you did that and you didn't just see me sitting there staring at the camera. Now you've got your output images, really take some time to think about what worked well about them, what was really great, and whether there are any practical applications you can think in your brand for going that little bit more unique and different with imagery. For the next thing we're doing, we're going to stick a bit closer to really high quality on-brand images. So we're going to jump back into the platform and I'm going to reprompt. I can do this within the same project or if you prefer, you can open up a new project. And my brand, in fact, let me show you my brand in this workspace is very much built around people holding pencils. So I've got an app factor. I might even stick with this prompt and just make some changes to it. I've got a joyful person holding an oversized yellow pencil with both hands, studio shot set against a solid red background, 
Vibrant Studio Lighting, DSLR camera with a 50mm lens at f7, high resolution with sharp focus, vibrant colours, detailed textures, dynamic pose, and vivid and striking composition. And it's given me some great, really intense, excited outputs. I want to make a few changes here, so I'm going to say a joyful young South Asian woman. I do want to be holding the yellow pencil still, but I'm going to change my colouring here. So solid green background. And actually, I want to really specify wearing a green over shirt. And there we go. I think I'm happy with everything else there. I got some great results from Imogen when I tried this before, so I'm going to go with Imogen again. And I'm going to go with six variations again. And I'm going to press generate. What you can see there is I included all of my key elements of prompting, but I was a bit less formulaic about it this time. So it's all still there, but I've perhaps phrased slightly differently. And I'm getting outputs already, which are absolutely great. What I hope you can see here is that once you've got a really good prompt, it's so easy to adapt it. And I would always suggest if you've done a great prompt, you've got a great result from it, you stick with that formula for all of your variations and reiterations. I can also try this with different models. So I'll see what I get from Stable Diffusion for this. I'm doing this already knowing that this won't be as good as the image and outputs. This is just something that I have found through practice and trial and error that Imogen is very good for. When you're having a go at your own brand imagery, I would encourage you to try out as many models as you can and see what you get. So we've got some um, good quality people. I just happened to know the image is quite good at those giant pencils from lots of practice. Let's go back to this one because that's a brilliant image. Once we have got our outputs here and once we've honed them and refined them and do what I've done, like have a go, change the colour palette, change a couple of things about the visual style, we can also introduce our negative prompting. So if I'm getting some outputs that I'm not happy about, and you can see here, for instance, working with Stable Diffusion, I ended up with multiple people in a couple of prompts, which isn't what I wanted. I can use negative prompting to list off the repeated elements I don't like. So you can list multiple people um, in a couple of these images. The woman has come through wearing a yellow shirt when I specifically wanted a green over shirt. I couldn't find yellow anywhere. Yellow clothing. And I think other than that, all distorted pencils. This will give me a little bit more context to go with my prompt. What you'll note there is that I didn't need to use negative language in this negative prompt. So I didn't need to write, do not include multiple people. The negative prompt box is inherently negative. You just need to list the things that you want to prompt out. We'll give that another go with stable diffusion. Although again, I can tell that my best model for this particular purpose is Imogen. That's probably what I would actually stick with. go. We've had mixed results there. We've got only individual people in a lot of these. Stable Diffusion has struggled a bit with the colouring still, but the overall quality of what it's producing for me here is better. Your task, again, 
might take about 10 to 15 minutes to do this, is to go into the image generation tool and really think about the types of imagery that are appropriate for your brand. You're then going to create yourself a prompt for an image that matches that use case. And again, we're thinking subject, medium, description, setting and framing, lighting and colour, and any medium specific properties, for example, camera settings. Keep going back and tweaking your prompt and regenerating to hone and refine your result. Now is the time to regenerate and regenerate and reiterate to get that practice in. Try it out with different models. And again, think about which one is closest to what you wanted. And once you've started to get some outputs and you've seen if there are any common features that you want to eliminate, then have a go using negative prompts to do that. So pause the video, give that all a try, and then I'll see you all in about 10 to 15 minutes. Right, we're back. So we're going to have a look back in the platform again. You can see some of those final outputs I had from Imogen, which are looking absolutely great. And the last thing that we're going to do today is to think about some of the other features available in our image generation tool. I'm not going to go through every single one in detail, you're going to have a chance to practice and try these out for yourself. But as a very quick run through, you'll notice our editing tools are available at the top. And you'll also see that at the moment I've got something grayed out. This is because not all editing features are available in every model. Stable Diffusion has the full range of editing features available. Imogen, you've got Magic Fill, Expand and Enhance. There aren't any editing features available in Getty or DALI or Stable Diffusion 3. Bria gives you Smart Arrays, Expand and Enhance. And Firefly has Magic Fill, Smart Arrays and Expand for those of you that have Firefly in your subscriptions. It does not matter which model you originally used to generate your image. These are Imogen models that I can switch to Stable Diffusion to make use of the tools that Imogen doesn't have. So we're going to have a go with Magic Fill. I've got an image here that I like. I'm going to write something into. And Pencil, and I'm going to say yellow graphic lightning bulbs coming from the tip pencil. And there we go. I think the second one's done probably something that's closer to what I was envisaging, but I actually quite like that first one as well. Uh, I'm definitely sticking with that, I love that. Next, we have Smart Arrays. You'll see that's not available on Imogen. So as I said before, I'm going to need to go and switch myself to Stable Diffusion to use this one. I'm going to usually use Smart Arrays to take out small details, but I'm not happy with. I'm going to stick with this image actually, and just as a really, really basic illustration of this, I'm going to take out the buttons on the overshirt. We can only highlight one element at a time. So if I wanted to do this repeatedly, I can just do it across multiple erasures. This works at its absolute best where it's erasing relatively small parts of the image see that's done an absolutely perfect job there and it works best against simple backgrounds it's just much more complicated 
the the models to arrays against something very detailed and intricate. And again, pretty much perfect. I will do that one more time. The last feature that I'm going to show you myself is expand. So the expand feature in pencil, there we go, allows you to change the aspect ratio of your image. We have multiple presets here, but you can also add different custom sizing. I'm just going to take this to a 191.1 just to show you it's on a really, really simple level. We'll expand that out. This works best with simple edges to images. If you have quite a plain edge or very few um, visual elements at the edge of an image, it will be able to continue absolutely perfectly. If you have something a bit more intricate, if you have something that's a bit more complex for the AI models to process that. So you might need to try a few times to get the result that you're after. But here, that's done that absolutely perfectly. The Enhance tool allows you to increase the overall quality of the image. So the overall pixel count of your output will increase. Just give it a go. It does take a little bit of time, which is why I'm not showing it live. The Styles feature allows you to adapt your image to a style reference that you can upload. The last image that I want to show you very quickly is our Compose feature, and you don't need to have pack shots in your asset library to do this. You can work from our test items. So if I have a go with this, I'm going to put in an asset. And again, this could be one of your own burned pack shots. I'm going to set a strength of UV lighting. So this will change the lighting on that pack shot to match the background that we generate. And then I'm going to do a good quality comp for this. I'm going to say photograph of asset sitting on a wooden coffee shop counter lightly lit. have to be that specific language of photography. Sometimes you can be more descriptive about it. Um, I'm then going to include my medium specific details. So we'll go F F4 and we will go with NZ3 and we'll generate that. see as we flip through them the lighting changes on the pack shot itself as well to integrate it really nicely with the background. So your last hands-on task in this session is going to be having a think about how you can refine the image that you produced in your last practice Think about how you can change your prompts, your negative prompts again, but also try out Pencil's editing tools. Just give them a go, see what works and what doesn't work for you. Once you're happy with one of your outputs, have a go using the expand tool to adapt it to multiple formats. And when you've got one final example that you're really happy with, upscale it in each format using the enhanced tool. Take about 10 to 15 minutes to do that. Pause the video and then when we come back, we'll just revisit our learning from this whole session. So now 
now that we're back, we'll just take one last look at what we've covered today. We've really focused on getting our prompts absolutely right and perfect, playing around with our formatting, adding in negative prompts as well to hone and refine our outputs. We have used the Compose tool, we've used editing tools to improve and enhance our results. And what you should have from this session is a couple of really, really good, high quality on brand images. If you want more information about this, we have a number of videos available on our website going into the detail of prompting and image generation. But the absolute best way to learn this and to build your skills is to keep on practicing. So please just generate and generate and generate. In our next video, we're going to be looking at mitigating bias in image generation. So we'll be really focusing on generating people and how to do that in positive, inclusive and ethical ways. Thank you so much and happy prompting.